Hey, fourth graders, this is your paired text for lesson 25, and it is an informational text. So it gives facts and details about a topic, and today's topic is Toys, Amazing Stories Behind Some Great Inventions by Don Wolfson. Wind-up toys and automatons. What makes a wind-up toy work? Turning a key tightens a spring inside the toy. As the spring unwinds, it turns gears, which move the toy's parts. Today's wind-up toys are for children, and most of them are relatively simple. Originally, wind-up toys were for adults, usually royalty, and were often extremely complicated and expensive. Rather than wind-up toys, they were called automatons and usually featured people, animals, or vehicles of some kind. With the finest craftsmanship, automatons moved by means of elaborate internal clockwork devices. Their interior was formed and decorated by hand, in many cases with the utmost skill and attention to detail. Turning the key on the wind-up toy tightens the spring. As the spring unwinds, it turns the gears inside the toy, causing the toy to move. So it turns here, turns here, turns here, and all the different pieces move. In the late 1400s, a German inventor by the name of Carol Grodd was invited to royal banquets. Sitting at the table, Grodd would open his hands and release a metal fly that buzzed across the room, circled the long dining table, and then returned to rest on its maker's hand. A few years later, Grodd created a life-size mechanical eagle that could fly around town and then return to its original spot. In 1509, the famous artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci constructed a mechanical lion to welcome Louis the 17th to Italy. 12th, that's Louis the 12th to Italy. When the French king was seated on his throne, Leonardo placed the animal on the floor at the opposite end of the great hall. As spectators stared in amazement, the clockwork lion moved slowly toward the king. It stopped in front of him and, as if in tribute to the king, tore open its chest with its claws. A decorative fleur-de-lis, the symbol of French royalty, tumbled out and fell at the king's feet. An even more incredible story is about how René Descartes, a renowned French philosopher and scientist of the 1600s, Descartes believed that all living creatures, including people, are basically just highly developed machines. To demonstrate this, he constructed a life-size mechanical girl. Shortly after completing the automaton, whom he named Francina, he took her on a sea voyage. By accident, the captain of the ship set her to motion. Terrified by her sudden movement, the captain ran. The robotic Francina kept coming toward him. In a panic, the captain grabbed the automaton and threw it overboard. Here's a fleur-de-lis that came out of the lion. Perhaps the most fantastic mechanical figures of all times were created by Jean-Pierre Droz, a Swiss watchmaker, and his son, Henri Louis. One of those made by Jean-Pierre, called the writer, was a full-size likeness of a young boy seated at a desk. When put into motion, the clockwork child dipped his pen into a bottle of ink, shook off the surplus with a flick of the wrist, and then proceeded to write clear and correct sentences. As each line was completed, the hand holding the pen moved to the beginning of the next line. Superior to the writer was the designer, an automaton created by Jean-Pierre's son Henri Louis. Like an artist studying his model, the automaton paused from time to time as he sketched, examined his work, corrected errors, and even blew the eraser dust from the paper. On one occasion, the designer was seated before King Louis the Sixteenth of France. After working for some time, the automaton put down his pencil and gestured with his hand to his work, a portrait of the French king. Later, when Henri Louis gave a demonstration in England, his automaton drew portraits of the English monarch and other royalty. Henri Louis died at the height of his fame in 1790. With him, the art of making automatons declined. Though a few choice pieces were created after this time by other artists, the quality of work went steadily downhill. More and more, the toys were made by machine rather than hand, and they became 
generally much simpler and cheaper. By the 19th century, they were made of tin or plastic and mass-produced in large numbers. Today, wind-up cars, tractors, trains, spaceships, and robots roll off assembly lines by the thousands. Many of them are clever and fun to play with, but the era of automatons is over. Will this specialized art form return? What do you think? Okay, that's your paired text. Go ahead and complete your other tasks.